So um, I want to go into uh, brands and I want to show you guys what we're doing today. Here's one version of it. This is called the Hobble Swing. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but we're going to be working with some Christed, uh, Christed, Twisted Crystal Strands or Christed Strands, if you want to just lop those all together, uh, from John B. These are by Crystal Lane, um, come in all kinds of different um, different colorways. I love them. Or, uh, and or, you can always use this link as a link. Um, this is the wire part of it, an aluminum wire, also from John B. Um, and uh, you can either double these up, uh, as you can see here, to make this capsule shape. That's kind of a swingy, uh, swingy link or you can just use one of these um, by itself and kind of do um, I always kind of like to do kind of a little balancing uh, mobile kind of earring too I remember the first time I did that I fell in love uh, it's all about the balancing act today um, we'll do that in another broadcast probably um, lots to do today um, and um, yeah so that's what we're doing today <laughs> yeah uh, let me get my background up here so you can so I can go ahead and tell you we are sponsored today by John Bede Corporation up there in near Toronto I guess we can just say Toronto Canada um, I am pretty much an honorary uh, Canadian welcome welcome to the show um, anyway so these are the these are the uh, earrings that we did. This is also could be a pendant that we did last week. And since I did two, I said, hey, let's make them into earrings. Afterward, let me see if I can find that overlay to show you. I always like to show you these because it's like prettier, right? So this was the what we did last week. It was the, the pendant on there. That's actually a fake necklace. <laughs> if you watched it. Um, and yep, I did not put the, uh, the other um, other pieces on there why it just keeps throwing this off I wish it would st there's this should be like an overlay that can just stick that's what I'm saying anyway um, I just wanted to mention with these guys I'm kind of not really digging the way that they're presenting I think if I want them to present front frontwards toward the front um, that I would actually um, just change the orientation of these and um, I wouldn't do it on this because we had that very fancy um, infinity loop figure eight kind of bail. We did that sort of double bail in there. So let's, why don't we just do this together? Because I love, I love sort of teaching this kind of thing. If you guys don't mind um, working with me here. Um, so, can I get that plier out of there? What I'd like to do, let's go. Um, let's go to this camera here. We're going to put. We're going to go up to this format here. There we go. Oh, I'm getting better at that. You see, I got everything figured out today. Um, but let's go ahead and take this off, okay? Because this is parallel. The loop is parallel with the earring, ear wire itself. So we're just going to take that off, slip it off. I'm going to put that back on. Now, if I change the orientation to this, it's going to be, you can kind of see that P or that Q there. What I want to do, is, since I'm going to change the orientation of this, is I'm going to just swing that back so I have that lollipop on top and everything is coming down central to, uh, to the earring itself. And then I am going to actually just change the orientation so I'm going to make it perpendicular to the ear wire itself. So I'm going to go like that. I can do that, but this, uh, this is such a buttery soft um, uh, wire. And I'm going to open this back up, and I'm going to put it back on. So I have the front going to the front. Yeah, there we go. And I'm liking that better, only because you're seeing a whole lot of that backstory over there. Uh, if I'm wearing them and mostly I mean I know people are gonna walk 3d around me right but I like if, if I'm seeing myself from the front I want I want to know I'm presenting well to you guys so I'm just gonna close that back up and I'll just show you the difference if I try to not put this one in the same uh, the same ear hole your piercing let's go you guys are probably like let's get it through this is the smaller of my piercings do you guys have 
a piercing that's like one is smaller than the other. This one I sort of have to just concentrate on. So I'll close my eyes. There it goes. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's see how it work, looks. Okay, so I'm just thinking, I just like the way this one's looking now rather than this because I'm seeing all kinds of all kinds of hardware there. What do you think? Maybe you disagree. <laughs> what I want to um, play with with you guys is look at all these. Let's go down to, um, let's go show this a little bit bigger here. These are all, well, not all. I mean, you guys should look at this. These are the Crystal Lane. These are the ones that I have left. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Guess what I forgot? The actual piece is still in the photo area. Um, but that's okay. We don't really need that. I can go get it if I need to. But um, let me just show you again. These, this is part of the peach strand. Isn't that gorgeous? And basically they have one, two, three, four, five different strands. Some have pearls in, some don't. Um, yeah. And uh, otherwise they have uh, crystalline crystals too, um, which are Czech crystals from the Czech Republic, but just luscious, luscious uh, colors and everything like that. Now, with when you, where you see this too, see the top one has a built-in veil up on top. The bottom one doesn't. And that's because I wanted to use this one as a pendant. I'm saying this now. <laughs> I did not have a plan, but it became a pendant. So that's what I wanted to do with it. Anyway, so this is that is what you can do with that. I like to have a built-in bail if I'm going to be attaching something to the top so that it's not falling down the side, right? I mean, how many times, and I'm still learning this one over and over and over again. Um, um, and, and there are times that you're going to want to do this. If you wanted to do just like a great, like that each one of these was a link and you wanted to do this all the way around, I think, I mean, so cool, you'd want to have bales on each side, I think, because then you would have that central area. Otherwise, your jump rings are going to be kind of, you know, hooking up and your links are going to be kind of like swooshing. So a bale is an also is a great way to have some control over your link and over your pendant, okay, um, especially if you're going to be adding things into it. If you don't, um, just think about how, uh, let's see here, well, let's take this off. We'll go back to here and put this back on. I don't like to have this off of here. Um, but basically, we're looking at this one, which is just both these uh, with, uh, links together. This is the same link. You can see that it's the opposite. Uh, it's flipped and, you know, flipped, mirrored and flipped the other way. Um, and then basically this one is not done with any of these. So this is the basic link here. Um, and it's just kind of fun to see it without the bail as well. I just put this here to tease you guys. Because I also thought, look here, you could do, look at this great big honking fancy stone from, um, so you could do a version like this with the Preciosa Czech crystal, um, these, these huge pendants. This is, let me just look it up on the back here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, drop almond. It's the 2661 39 by 25 millimeter in Bermuda blue. Gorgeous. Okay, before I get too much further and forget that I was going to say this to you guys. Thanks, Deb. Deb Flores is here. Deb Flores is in the house. Woo hoo. <laughs> Hi, Maria Carmen. So good to have you here. Okay, let's see here. I am going to, I think this is still in my cut and paste. Let me see here. Okay, here you guys might have to go through this twice here. This is your link, wherever you're watching from, um, to the twisted strands that I just showed you. Now, in the instructions, which I'll show you here in a minute, there are, I could, I just put red. I don't know which one I'm working with <laughs> and it doesn't say on the back there are several different ones and I couldn't tell from the skew on there so I just had to put like red red black and white this one's blue brown I'm sure they have much more beautiful names 
One's name, I got, I'm going to uh, credit Carmi uh, Simicata, the marketing person for John Bede. One was called Pincushion Pink. I love it. And it was funny because you know how things happen synchronicity wise with synchronicity? I'm looking through my stuff in my sewing basket and there is a pincushion and it's pink and it's pincushion pink. <laughs> I loved it. Anyway. Back to uh, back to what's going on here. Actually, let me give you both of these links right away in the same place so that you can uh, see them. And I'm going to go into here and see if I can't uh, talk amongst yourselves. Work a day. Where is this aluminum link? <laughs> You think you're organized. Lisa, Lisa's here. She says, the strands remind me of a better revamp of the 80s twisted beads that were so fabulous. Thanks. I know. I thought they were cool. Um, and um, <laughs> Deb says, woo woo. <laughs> you're so adorable. Woo woo. Um, anyway, I, I think they're, and, and I just thought, Oh my goodness, she did such a great job of these pairings. She, I'm, I'm deciding that Carmi did all this all by herself. Um, she, she's very talented at a number of different things. But anyway, um, why not use them? I'm, I'm very sort of visual. And if I see this and it's already twisted, I'm like, I like that just as it is. And you'll see that with some of my found object stuff. Um, like, uh, Instead of like, I don't know how many of you know um, Michael Demang. He's a found object assemblage artist and painter. And how he puts things together is that he uses um, uh, the found objects as sort of the backdrop. And then he, everything gets painted with sort of the same wash. Uh, we, we tease because I use things for the thinginess of them. I like the things in and of themselves. And I might alter them somewhat. But I, I'm not, I'm not going to paint or wash over them. And it's just the different way that we work. Uh, if you don't know about Michael Demang, I'm going to put put his name in here now. Check him out. Um, uh, he lives in Canada now too, but um, fabulous teacher and fabulous uh, friend and uh, and assemblage artist. Okay, so do I have everything here? Yes, I do. But first, I need to go into uh, into here and see if I can't find my John Big links really quickly. Um, come on up, come on up, Microsoft Word. I love this part because I can do this and still be talking to you guys, and you can see where is it? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna grab this link from here, and. Uh, you know how sometimes your brain just like, how do I do that double clicking? <laughs> There's another story to go along with that. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We're just going to minimize that, and we're going to do this here. Lena, hello. I know you guys on the East Coast are like three hours ahead of us. Lena says it's late. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lena's going up. Up the thing. She says it's late, it's dinner time in her world, and she is still watching me. Mwah. Hello to you and Graham. Oops, okay. It says to try again. Sometimes that happens. We'll do that, and we're just going to hit go again. See if we can't get these to go. Anyway, uh, so good to have you here, Lena. You guys know, uh, might not know, that Lena is a, um, a, des a designer um, for John B. Many of the designs that you see from John Bede are Lena's. Awesome work. Plus, your Instagram page, girl. Ooh, love it. She's one of the best photographers of jewelry that I have ever met. If you guys want to see awesome jewelry and awesome jewelry photography, go to Lena's site. Um, Sandy Pohl. Sandy Pohl, did we go to school together? Hmm? <laughs> I know I know the polls from um, from Powers, Powers, Hermansville area in Upper Michigan. Okay. Yes, and Lena is a rock star, and Debbie and Deb and Lena are friends. So, complete transparency. 
<laughs> not that we needed to go there. Okay, so I got that out. What I want to do is I want to show you before we get this going, always, 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 you guys, there are, here, let's bring me over to here so we can see this better and you're not scrunching. Um, there are two sets of instructions. Actually, there's instructions and then there's the written instructions here. Everything you want to know ever about what we're doing here is all written out, okay? And then also we have both the template, the pattern that we're going to be using today. And if you're a jig manufacturer, if you have the, now that's a jig, you can use this one too. These are all available. And I will show you in a second here. Um, so the jig ones are available at www.brendaschwader.fc.com. Or uh, you can go to... No, that's not it. <laughs> All of the uh, non-jig patterns are available for free uh, at Bead Projects and PDS from John Bead Facebook group. Um, I was a little late getting them in today, so they might not be loaded up yet, but check again tomorrow if you don't mind. Free templates. This is a John, it's a, it's a Facebook group called Bead Projects and PDS from John Bead. Okay, so go ahead and grab those there. And if there's anything that you can't find, something that you need that you said, Brenda said this is, that you know, what, what's going on with that, John Bede? You can email them at info at johnbede.com and they will uh, help you out. It was fine, folks, up there in the very cold hinterlands. What is the temperature up there, Lena? <laughs> I can say that because I'm from the UP and it gets pretty cold. Actually, I think uh, Upper Michigan might be even further north than Toronto. But, you know, there's that whole Great Lakes thing and everything going on. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. And I swear I have not had extra tea today. Not a coffee drinker myself. Okay, so we're going to grab um, this pattern here. And we are going to work this baby. What I did was... Are you kidding me? No, I did. Okay. Um, I did grab because I want to be able to make this. You need a one inch mandrel, bale making pliers, blah, blah, blah. If you have now that's a player, um, you could use the one inch thing from there. Um, and we're just gonna kind of move some of this stuff off so that we can, there it goes, onto the floor, cut. Cut. All right, we're going to put this guy up here. We're going to leave this up here. Maybe I shouldn't because um, it might fly away on us. Just let me slink down here gracefully and get my one inch mandrel. That's fall into the floor. It's only me, guys. All right, so uh, I don't want to burst your bubble or anything, but I am not going to be doing the stringing part. You guys can figure that out pretty darn easily, but I'll give you some hints when we get to that part. Um, all of the instructions here, you can see, have, or you might not be able to see behind here, this has all of the things you need, um, you know, what sizes we need with everything, the length of your wire, the uh, the type of wire, if in case you work with steel, that's all in there too, because I'm a big proponent of steel. And um, what kind of wire should we use today? I don't know why I put this here, but this is this is I guess this goes in in with in my thing. These are just so you guys don't think that this is this is something that is just always easy for me, even after how many years in the biz. These are all of my R&D projects to figure this thing out. But I did it. I did it. And actually, because um, I wanted to do it for the jig, too, it would have been a lot easier if I would have just repeated what I did the first time, which was off jig. But I wanted to replicate it for the jig, which takes a little bit of jig factoring jiggering, whatever you want to call it. So let's see. Um, I don't know. Let's work with this. I love this color. This is the fuchsia. Um, and all of those, I gave you the link for the wire is all the 12 gauge wire that's up on the craft shop, which is an Amazon link, but it's the craft shop uh, for John B. So you've got that good going for us. Okay. So 
I'm going to put that out of the way. What you're going to be doing basically is just following this. Oh, I see another another little tweak that we should have made. Okay. Boy, this is has not been Sarah and I's month. Um, yeah. Where's that one? This should be centered on top of here, you guys. Um, but we will we'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, we're going to need because the two template the template and the and the and the pattern vary a little bit. Um, they should. So anyway, what we're going to be doing? Let's go ahead and make um, a double. We'll make a link. Okay. So we'll make we'll make each of these because we haven't done this part yet, right? Where we're going to make a bail on the top and the bottom and then we're going to make a couple jump rings and we're going to put those through for you guys. Um, you know what? Why don't I just put this in the jig, which is right here so I don't lose it. Okay. So I know that I need, um, here's this for, this is for the bailless one. I need six inches, but for the bailed top setup, I'm going to need eight inches going around because I don't like to measure in front of you. I'm just going to lop off a big old bunch. And I'm going to make two, right? Two, two, two. I know, Deb, right? Deb says that. Um, I always have to try to put these up so you guys know what I'm talking about on the replay and everything. Deb says that color is awesome. I love this. You know what they should also have? I know that Deb, one of your favorite colors is yellow. They should have, because they have a gold, but they should have like yellow wire. I would love that. So cool. And Lena says it is, oh, that's right. You have to do a centigrade. 68. Not bad there right now. Not bad at all. Okay. Hi, Zindy's Drill. How are you? Where are you from, my love? And you came through at 234. That's one of my favorite numbers. So. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually um, just kind of swoop you guys over here. Let's see if we can. Uh, can you see that? All right. Here's the other part of my uh, my setup here, and I have a jig set up right here um, with the cutter. And I, what I've done is I've just put a quarter inch peg right in here, and because um, it's just going to be a little easier to work with if this thing is stationary, right? So I'm just going to take my piece of wire. I'm going to just grab the center bit of it, and I'm going to go around here. See how easy it is to work? I love this stuff. I really love this. And um, so there you go. There you go. Okay. So... Um, and then what I'm going to do is, because I want to show you, oops, let's go back to here. Isn't that nice, this little swing arm thing? This is what Kate, Kate Richburg is really so nice with all of her ideas. And she is the one that told us <clears throat> all about how to do a lot of these things. So you can see how this is up here now. We'll fix this. This one needs to go straight above here on the jig one. Basically, you need to have it off center. Okay, uh, how to do this? Just because of how the jig, the, the holes and everything are set up, the drills, um, things don't always look the same. You have to sort of um, jerry rig these things. So I've got my beautiful thing here. I'm just going to hold it up here where I want it centered, and then I'm going to come, kind of come down here, come down here, come down here and and make a nice just following that so loverly then let's see here let's see how easy it is to do with your fingers and you can see i'm just sort of like holding things and just kind of like matching things up the best i can and then starting to, starting to do this side as well too here if you're not working with aluminum, uh, you can easily do this. Just find something, right? All you're going to do is find something to work around here. I can do this, and hopefully you have 
a one inch something at home. I'm just going to form this around here with that in the middle. Right? There you go. Since then. And if, if you didn't have a one inch man, you still have this sort of shape right here to work with. Um, what could you what could you find that's a one inch at home? A super big Sharpie marker. Uh, what else? A skinny something from your makeup box, maybe a foundation thing, a nail polish bottle. And really, um, you know, if you're off a little bit, your your uh, links are just going to be a little bit different than mine. And you can make them all consistent yourself if you want. OK, so this is way too much wire here. But let's get this out of the way so you can see Isn't that nice. So that's where I want that over there with that. This is a quarter inch inner dimension here. And then I am going to um, grab my pliers. I'm going to get my tongue out so I can do this. And I'm just going to kind of measure this here. I'm going to take this up to here and just go all the way around. Now, even if I have this in a wrong place, I can fix this. Okay. So let's just kind of go this far and see how we did. So I'm basically just guessing at first, right? Ooh, that's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. Okay. And I know that the very bottom of my round nose is not one quarter inch inner dimension. Um, but I'm just going to go with it here. As I said, yours will, might be a little bit different. Or if you have a bail maker that is, um, you know, has that dimension, you, why don't you go ahead and use that? So I'm just going to bring this around here and finish off that perfect loop that didn't turn out as perfect as I wanted it to. That's not too, too bad. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to do this second one right here. Something just fell down too. Okay. We're going to grab this here, take it back, go all the way around. And I can either loosen that grip or I can keep going. Okay. Let's see what I got. Not too bad. This one, this one needs to come up, right? And so all we're going to do is we're going to kind of loosen that back up, get in there. <laughs> slop around a little bit <laughs> and we're going to take up some of that slack in there. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's see if I've got it in the right and about the right place. Not too, too bad. I'm getting there. Ah, Mascara pack. I love this medicine bottle. Hi, Pat. Pat says medicine bottle works sometimes. <laughs> Deb, I've seen she said yes, yellow mascara package. Yep, depending if you have some of the thicker ones, right? Um, and the prescription bottles, right? Exactly, you guys. I love it. I love, love, love it. Yeah, so what are some of those other things? I think I might have told you last week that. Um, that these I used um, the smallest measuring. It's not the eighth cup. It's the one for the coffee. <laughs> you do end up getting uh, getting pretty creative, right? Okay. So this is where I don't like to get too crazy with this, um, but especially because with with um, I don't like to go in too many, go in and come back out too many times because with the, um, the aluminum, it really, I just want to get close here and then I might bring it back. Yeah, I might bring it back over here. I'll show you this in a second when I get this sort of set up. And then, so you can kind of see, we'll just tip it up this time. 
since I have this shape here and I know that I want this. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. It's always nice to have something perfect to form around, guys. Let's see if I bring it back here if it's if it's right. Okay. A little bit further. And so you can kind of just see that I'm just kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul here. I don't know who Peter and Paul are, but they've become famous <laughs> over the years. Okay. And just, and just, you know, just sort of uh, wrangling this stuff. There I go. I did it for that one. And for this one here, I like this. Um, let's get back to here. I like this one, but it's not big enough. So I'm going to bring that back over without kind of like making you guys dizzy. And I'm just going to fix this one over here where I have this mandrel. So, okay. The idea is that, um, yeah, there we go. That still needs to be up. And I can actually just take and kind of roll this too, okay, if I want it further up. Here is like, again, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Of course. Or, or I can just really mess with it. <laughs> I will get this eventually. Okay. I don't want to... Uh, I want to rob things too much because this proportion right here is pretty. So if, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to fudge too much on this one, this uh, this is pretty important here to get right because you do want to in order to have that capsule shape, you're gonna want the smaller to add up with the the larger. Okay, uh, unless you're just making the mobile earrings just with the one part, and then you know that's fine. And so here I can see that I kind of got a little bit crazy here, getting this, and I want this to go down straight. So I want these. And for some reason, <laughs> there we go. Always maintaining that that, that bale is centered up on top. There we go. Whew, sweating bullets for a minute there. Um, and so we're just going to take that where where the wire starts to overlap with itself and grab that and take that off and then we're going to do the same thing here okay now if you ever need to just sort of nudge and straighten you can take this to your bench block but also what i do is that just the biggest part of my my chain nose or i take my flat nose and just do a little nudge 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 make sure you're not down if you have a cutter one <laughs> you don't want to be doing that but just a little nudge 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 here where you want to straight away and that's going to kind of fix that up a little bit and nudge 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 in here okay not my best work here as i'm doing this um, <laughs> um, not being able to hold things correctly and to the side and all that kind of stuff. But you guys get the hint. You get the hint. Oh, so I want this here. There we go. There and coming down here. All righty. Pretty good, pretty good. Not really happy with those loops, but as I said. Now, um, we were gonna do another one just like it. Let's do a two-tone. Let's do something wacky like copper. This is a brown, it's a copper. Um, looks like I haven't even taken this one out yet. Can tell it's getting hotter in the studio now you guys it's been in the 90s here so and i don't like the oopsie i don't like the um cooler my little mini split above me to be going because it makes too much sound while i'm trying to do this so it's a little warm in here 
All right. Let's try that again. I'm going to do it a little bit different to see if I can't get a better result here. And the, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab and we're going to go back over here, okay, to the jig. We've got this guy here and I'm going to have this guy here. I'm going to go around here, right? So easy when you have something to work, to work around. And then I'm going to actually just sort of hold this here. If I had, I say I could make this stationary if I wanted to, but I don't have a um, screw right here. So I'm just going to hold this around here and hold this around here. Okay. Now. I do want to I do want it to to match the other one because I'm getting excited because I'm thinking wouldn't I go back to the beginning doing a whole big chain like this all the way around would be so darn cool I might do that in steel too but I like the idea of doing this whole big thing in um, in the bright colors of the aluminum so cool okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see if I have my Sharpie here. If not, oh, okay. Nope, missing that too. That's okay. Um, as I'm going to tr put my plier right where this is going to start, and I'm going to bring this back around here. I don't know if you can see that well. Um, maybe I can... Just trying to, okay, I'll try to do it here so that I want this top to come all the way back around here and use this to make that right at the end. Okay, much better, much, much better. Look, and I've got that nice straight away. I'm, used, I'm touching the aluminum as little as possible. Yeah, that is pretty much right on there. Nice. So again, I'm just putting this at the top of where I want. Oopsie. You guys couldn't see that. I'm moving everything around. I'm putting my plier at the top of where I want that loop to be, to end, to start. And then I'm going to put it on here, switch it around so that you guys can, my hand isn't in the way. Put it there and then start bending around again. That way I'm touching the aluminum very minimally and I'm getting better results. Okay, let's put it back on here and see how well I did. Okay, much, much better. I am vilified. <laughs> Sometimes these things you just go like, oh my God, I look so ridiculous doing this, but I know that you will love me anyway, I hope. So all I'm going to do is go back in here, and again, I'm going to take and cut that right where the wire starts to meet itself so it can go. And what I say about that is that then at that very point, you can push it flat, and it makes a nice flat loop. But, and actually, you could do this... Um, See, I, I kind of shorted that one, so I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to cut that. Did I get it? Yep. Didn't make that nice clip, clip sound. So I could leave it like this, sort of like um, I did this cute little link called Girls with Curls, where basically it just sort of looked like this kind of even looks like a girl with um, with some curly curls down at the end, um, which would be cute, too. Um, this is how we get ideas, don't we? We just kind of take riffing off of what we see as, as artists. But what these indications right here tell us is that I want you to make, oops, here's another, no, it, she did. Sarah doesn't miss much. Um, this is on, this is the lollipop on top. And basically what we want to do is we just kind of want to even those out, okay? Because you want to put this in here right where we want to make that bend. Oopsie, right down here. And then I'm going to 
use my powerhouse thumb and bend that. And that's how we get that nice, even, it's almost, you could call it a treetop too, but lollipop on top where the, uh, where the sucker stick, lollipop stick is centered. Okay, and we're gonna take this here again, putting it right inside of here, but on the length, not on the cut end, put it right in perpendicular, and then we're just gonna move that to the side so we get that this is one of the things when i teach that is hardest for people to uh to learn sometimes um but um god that piece is just terrible um but anyway so once you get it you get it and it's just really sort of second nature okay let's see how i did here so this is the second piece. We want the longer to go with the shorter. So maybe you have sort of this cute like mod blouse and um, it's pink and brown and it's so adorable and you want all of these sort of links um, to uh, be highlighted. Maybe you want like a mix and match um, type thing, right? I don't know, but I'm already buying the blouse. I don't know where I can get it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So um, here we go. So I'm just going to take it back to my bench block. This is the cutest little hammer ever. This is uh, by John B. Their Metal Complex. I could put it this way so you can see it, but I love that it's just got the two plastic ends. Um, this is a little bit more like a rubber end here. It is a rubber end. I would remake this one it's a little bit bitten up if I had if we had more time but I just want to show you what's what's going on here okay I also just love the graphicness of this link I mean I think it's just so fun with just this very overt loop at the end um, I think you know there are times when you want to hide your findings or your some of your uh, engineering, but there's other times when it's just just like celebrate it, get it out there, show it all. It's kind of like like the deconstructive uh, architecture. Was that from the 90s? I love that stuff. And then it didn't stay in. I think it wasn't very popular with with some people. I'm trying to think of what I think it was a Best Buy that did that um, in Milwaukee at one place, and it was just like so cool. Anyway, I also like this link just by itself because I just think, again, the graphic part of it is so darn cool. And you can get away like this one, my pink one, since this one was the first one, it's not really the best. Um, but you can get away with some of this with the jump rings um, because there's going to be some fudge uh, in there that's going to be um, also pretty forgiving, right? Because the jump rings are just made with um, grabbing, you know, and you can do, I kind of like the look of two. Here we go, down here, two each. Uh, you can see that in the upper area, but of course you only need one to, to make it work. So we're going to make a couple brown ones. We're going to make a couple fuchsia ones. Oops. My goodness. A lot of times I'll just make um, jump rings that I need. I'm not like very good at thinking ahead, if you haven't noticed that already. And so I'll just make whatever I need at the time. Some people like my friend Keith Labou, he likes to sit and make jump rings just one day. I'm like, why? <laughs> why do you like that? <laughs> okay, so here's a little jump ring uh, thing. And I know that this is gonna be the end. So I want, this is the flush cut. If you're just cutting these without a saw, you guys, here's a really simple way to do it, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. Uh, yes, I'm going to flip this so that this first jump ring ends here, and I need a flush cut right there. So I'm going to kind of go back in here, get as close as I can at this, and I'm going to come in perpendicular to it. 
get a better grip on my cutter and cut that one as well. And then you just keep flipping back and forth. Using your tongue if you need to. <laughs> Not with the cutter to help you. <laughs> okay. I put in the instructions that you should hammer your jump rings if they're out of sorts. But, you know, and the other thing is that with jump rings, especially you basically when you're coiling them, you're hardening them already. So it's not really all that important, especially if you sort if they're sort of in, in proportion to their gauge. Um, you really don't need to, now I'm, I'm flipping it so I don't have to flip my pliers. If you flip the piece, you don't have to flip the pliers. But let me just see if I'm doing it right. Nope. I'm getting this one here. Okay. All the snippets go off to the side. You guys are quiet. Any, any con questions or anything like that? This is aluminum wire. It's fun to work with. A lot of times jewelry isn't made with aluminum wire, so this is kind of an, a fun experiment to do. Okay, whoops. <laughs> I put the jump ring in that pile and the pile that I didn't want to, to do that. So let's just, uh, we could do one of two things. We could do put both brown on one side and both pink on the other, or we could boot put both as sort of a transition. But basically, I'm going to pick this one up, and then I'm going to put this one up. So they're matching, but not matching. And then I'm going to close this. Now, I'm not, I didn't, um, I didn't do any filing of these ends, so they're not falling, they're not quite together, but you would want to do that. A lot of times what I do is just kind of get in there. Take your needle on those fly pliers and just file that nice and flat. That cut was really a diagonal, so I have a lot more filing to do. There we go. But because it's aluminum, it's short work because there's it's very soft and it's filing that away very easily. That's pretty good. So I can open this back up actually and just flip it back on there. Much better. Open and close. And then I like to give it the old one to make it be on the same plane. So that's kind of fun too, you know, and you might want to, who knows what you want to do to make this, um, you know, it's up to you how you want to do any of this pattern work here, but I'm just going to try to match these up. It's a little bit harder because these aren't even, right? When you fold it, it's not even, but let's grab this and get it closed. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. I'm trying. Do you guys know what I'm doing with this hair? I'm going to go white. I won't call it gray because I don't know what's under there. But you guys probably know that redheads go, go gray earlier a lot of times. And so I just thought, I just want to see what's under there. And so I'm just going like... Jesse, my hairdresser is so cool. So you can kind of see, like this is my natural right here. She said, but there's a lot, a lot more darker um, hair in the back of my head. So we'll see. I'll probably have to still do some dyeing, but so, so I think that's pretty cute. 
And now that I'm thinking, you know, if you did this uh, link all the way around, you might want to put the bales more like on the inside, right? So you could follow this one if you wanted to do that. You could do a lot of different things. Um, and of course, you could do it. So obviously, you're having this link that's a little bit longer, right? Uh, as it's going around. So if you think of it, it's going to be sort of just like this more geometric instead of a curvy curve. So you'd really have to kind of play around with how you would like that. Um, but I'm really kind of digging this link as a link. Link as a link. Link as a, an earring. Right? So if we just cover this up, we could do some earrings. We could do some mobile type earrings and uh, or not. Put, you know, just have to figure out how you're going to um, uh, how you're going to balance the weight of things, right? So that's a little more thinking right there. Um, but I thought that was cute, and I just kind of wanted to show you. Here's where I'm going to need to get um, get the other piece that was from the photo area, which is just right over here. Hold on. Um, On Instagram today, there's kind of a funny little story of, of the back uh, of the the back uh, back of the scenes. So I'm just taking this off the roll here. That's where my orange wire went to, right? So this is because uh, I wanted to show you how I would approach doing this twist, and I'm going to teach you about what I did wrong in the first place. Um, and only in that, uh, you basically, I just used I Irish wax linen and I couldn't find my orange. So I'm like, well, what would red look like with, with, uh, with the peach? And you kind of think, Ugh. but I really kind of liked it inside some of these translucent colors. You can't really see it in this little bit more opaque one, but this one, it sort of gives us just little tiny bit of a darker glow in these uh, faceted beads, which I thought was really fun. So, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. But the most important thing I want to tell you is that, ba so basically, um, there's a couple of things I want to tell you, is that, as I said, I loved doing this twist, right? I love taking advantage of this. But what I should have done and I didn't do is just sort of like measure it here and kind of come back. So say I wanted to, do, to to use the brown inside here. That might be kind of fun, right? It's just do a rough measurement. And what I would do is I would probably just take and I would make a, put a tie right to this one. And then I would sort of look and see, okay, how many do I fit in here? Probably this one. And you can add or subtract one or two but when you're working with five of these different strands and you're trying to twist them and trying to knot them and all at the same time, um, this was a bugger to finish finish off just because I had to sort of go back on that in my in my mind and you know hook it up to something and blah blah blah. Um, so it was all kind of going um, nicely. Um, and so I like the way that this this link was, which is this is the pendant version, right? Was thick enough to do this. Now, also, if you're going to be using this as a link, um, it needs to be fairly tight in there, right, to be able to sort of lead, lend with the gravity. If it's a, pe a pendant, the gravity is going to work with you. Um, but just just some some things, you know, to kind of work on. I actually kind of like this one. Or maybe you would want to do, um, you know, all of the... Um, I don't know. You guys, you guys are the designers out there. Um, there's so many different things. I can see that in some of these beads here, there's just a tiny bit of like pink that it's picking up without being close to anything pink. So here we go. See that pink in that one there? So it kind of just lend myself. I did not do that on purpose, but, uh, but that's kind of pretty too. And aren't these great? Look at this. So there's three different sizes of pearls and then there's these faceted beads in there. And then these, which we used for our, remember these? We used these for our Love and Above um, 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 pin brooch. 
these look like they're a little bit more browns. I think we used the um, the gold ones. Anyway, hi Sharon. I am crafty. <laughs> Sharon, so good to have you here, my love. She says it's a really crafty idea. Thank you. Okay, Sherry says, thank you very much for the for the question. I'll, how do you get the template foods projects? If you want the jig one, you go to friendishwaiter.etsy.com. Uh, the jig ones are three o'clock, three o'clock, three dollars on that one, and just one dollar for the other ones. But if you want the other ones, this one that you see right down here for free. Uh, oh, that's not it. Why can't I find? Oh. They are all available, Sherry, at free at uh, bead projects, quote unquote, bead projects and PDFs from John Bead. It's a Facebook group. That's where you go. Pretty darn cool, huh? Also, guys, I wanted you, I, met, I referenced uh, Instagram a little bit more. I'm in, on Instagram. I am obsessed with Instagram. I love everything about Instagram now. Uh, um, and I'm on there at least, uh, probably at least twice a day. Uh, with posts and uh, reels, which are becoming more fun. Um, if you're not on Instagram already, you want to get on because there's a lot of fun stuff happening on there. Reels are sort of Facebook slash Instagram. Instagram's owned by Facebook. Instagram's solution to TikTok. Um, and as you know, video is just capturing everyone's attention. I can spend so much time watching reels. It's kind of pathetic because they're short. They're either 15 seconds or 30 seconds. And so you get sort of that short hit and you can watch through a lot of them, which I do. It's research, though. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> OK, I think I think that is about everything, you guys. Um, I'm scrolling through my overlays here to see if I have forgotten anything here is the beauty picture of what we just did right so that is the one without the loops you can do loops or no loops you can make it into um, a mirror image capsule shape if you want you don't have to uh, and you can fill it with lots of goody things um, that you might have on hand I was going to try to fill some uh, found objects in there that's just a whole nother thing, and we'll be doing those on some of the um, some of the Instagram lives as well. Um, so, that with that said, you guys, uh, let's take this off of here now. I can find it. Where is it? Boom. Um, so I'm going to be doing lives. I'm thinking on Instagram once a week. Thursday is Brenda has to wear makeup day anyway, so I'm thinking of maybe makeup, uh, makeup. I'm thinking maybe doing them like right before this or right after this, or um, depending. What we're going to be talking about um, is a project that I've got. I might have talked to you about it before called Collaborate. Um, collaborate respond it's a project that I'm doing that will also be focused at Milano Jewelry Week um, so we'll be having guests on we're also going to be talking about process the process I love the process of making things as I think it explains a whole lot of why we do what we do and helps kind of demystify some of the process of doing things some people who don't maybe feel as artistic know that you and I am laying on my not laying I'm kneeling on my floor um, in my studio trying to get their best shot with this jerry-rigged uh, little setup in my photo studio etc cetera, etc cetera. and I think it just sort of humanizes the whole thing and makes it not so not so magical even though I think art is always magical it doesn't have to be off-putting right so that's what I'm going to be doing um, so talking about a lot of different things I'm also going to be talking about how I put certain pieces together um, and the first one I'm going to do is this really fun little piece that I showed my husband and he said my love you are not from this world <laughs> and I took that as a compliment <laughs> I really, really did. <laughs> because why take it any other way, right? Mwah. 
All right, you guys. So um, onward and onward. We're just celebrating this stuff here and just having a great time. Uh, as always, I have so enjoyed being with you guys today. Thank you so much for showing up as little or as much as you can. And to those of you uh, watching on the repost as well, um, sharing is also good, always good. Uh, helps me keep doing what I'm doing. As you know, um, starving artist is always sometimes what we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm not starving but um, but yeah all right we've been live for an hour and uh, almost 15 minutes now so I will say goodbye join me again um, next Thursday at 2 o'clock I think we're gonna be back to 2 I might have to go to a Wednesday next week um, make sure you um, make sure you watch those little ads that I put out I think there's something going on on Thursday that I got to whip around, but I, that might be further on in the summer. Anyway, um, next week's going to be fun. We're actually going to be making a cherry, a 3D cherry out of Preciosa crystal and aluminum wire. It might be my best, best work yet. <laughs> all right. Love you all. We'll see you next week on the flip flop or we'll see you on Instagram in between. Thanks a lot, guys. Mwah. Love you all. Adios.